So now that we've finished making the inner liner for the most part, let's go in uh, very quickly and just start kind of cleaning this area up. And I'm just going to grab some vertices here and just start shifting these over a bit just to get them out of the way. And we can see here there's a little bit of an issue as well. So I'm going to grab some of these. And I'm just going to move them over a bit. And then lastly, this top part here. Select both of those, just move them down. And that's, oh, there's another area here too. This little underside. I'm going to go to the x ray. And we just need to grab from this position here, try to grab this edge and see if we can move it up. It's probably gonna poke out the top a little bit, but we'll just continue adjusting it a bit. And then we'll just move it forward a tiny bit and check the front and cool. So now we can go back to object mode and then go to shading and use the default material and just kind of double check that nothing's poking out. That's not supposed to. And I'm going to get out of the uh, reference mode and I'm going to grab my hyper shade again and I'm going to put on the uh, gray blend, the dark gray blend that we had on the other one for the underside. I'm just going to apply that to the top layer. There, so we can start to see everything together. Cool. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put, I'm going to grab that uh, hyper shit again and just put this to transparent so we can see the inside. So now that we've done that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically crease the edge. So I'm going to show you how to work with creases and, and then we're going to pull out this top layer and we're going to use a quick blend shape and just uh, apply a kind of custom pattern to it. Um, we're just going to move through that kind of quickly. So just, just go ahead and talk about the creases. So I'm going to isolate this. So with creasing, what's really great about creasing is we're able to establish uh, hard edges and transitions without adding the necessary resolution. So in this instance, if I wanted to grab, let me actually, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a cube as an example not a sphere and so here and I'm gonna duplicate this over if we wanted to take this geometry and we hit three and we wanted to have these edges stay hard we would need to add the proper resolution and you can see that if we do if we hit two you can see the cage as well as the smooth mesh if we do insert edge loop tool and I just drag one up we can see that that becomes tight automatically and that's like I mentioned earlier because the distance that the uh, mesh has to smooth is less here than it is to the bottom part so that transition is is much tighter and less uh, less blobby so of course the same thing if we add one here and if we want to tighten it we just add an edge loop here and an edge loop here and so you can see that that's one way to start adding uh, detail and hardness to to the polygon. So we're in three mode, but we have a nice tight edge. And so if we could, we would also is one alternative to do that here, but I don't, I don't think it's necessary in this instance to start adding unnecessary resolution. And especially the way that we built this edge was specifically because we identified that we were going to be using creases and we didn't need to establish this edge flow the same way. Because right now we wouldn't be able to insert edge loops this way because we're going to run, as soon as it hits a triangle, it's going to stop. And so we would need to approach this a little bit differently. But with creases, for example, if we look at how creases work, we just select the edges we want to crease. So in this instance, if I wanted to crease all of them, for example, we could do that. And if I hit three, 
and I go up to my edit mesh, which is here, and then do crease tool. Crease tool works with the middle mouse button, and we click and drag while holding the middle mouse button to the right to add the value, and then to the left for it to be completely removed. So because I selected only those top and bottom edges, it's creased those edges, but it's still not hard and like the cube is. So if we select all of them and I go back to my creases and I go all the way down, if you basically walk it over by holding the middle mouse button, you can see that it's starting to tighten and tighten and tighten. And you can get to a level which you're happy uh, with. And it's a little step right now. It could do your function up or page up. But here you can see basically that we're achieving pretty much the same result without having to add the resolution like we do here. And you can always still win this crease because as soon as you uh, go back to your display mode one, your um, edges are going to be dark. So with creases, you do have to be careful. They are a bit finicky. Um, you have to treat them nicely. And it doesn't like uh, working with... You, it doesn't like having areas that are creased, other areas that are creased, and combining different geometries that are creased. So you have to just be careful with it and make sure you're saving the file properly. So right now I'm going to shift and double click these edges <clears throat> and just so until we get the entire way around the bottom one as well and so instead of having I think I missed one nope instead of having this blobby uh, form here we're gonna want to and also we want to make sure we grab these end ones And we're going to want to uh, crease this because right now when we hit three, we can see that it's just super blobby. So if we go to our crease tool, now that we have those edges selected, and actually before I do that, I'm going to go up to create sets and then quick select set. And I'm going to call this border edges. I'm going to save that as a selection set. That way, if we ever unclick and we're somewhere else, we can go back to edit, quick select sets, and select it, and it's going to select those edges for us. You can also do the crease selection sets. So here, in this case, we could create a selection set for the crease and use a crease set editor to adjust the values. But for now, we'll, we're going to just, since this is just an overview, we're going to just do the crease tool and not worry about uh, any of the other options. So right now, I just middle mouse button drag all the way to the right and we see we have the edge that's hard and it's perfect now so transition between one and three that edge maintains its position if you wanted to add some areas of hardness you could do that that here as well if I go up to on this shaded default shaded material and select these edges if I wanted to I can do the crease again and we could create these creases which can be nice for certain effects in certain areas. You know, if you have a like soft fabric between two, two hard, uh, two rigid pieces of geometry, it, it creates a nice little transition here. So if you're something that you're interested in, you can definitely uh, spend some time working with that. And to delete the creases, if we haven't selected, we can do remove all the creases, or you can remove the selected. And we're going to do a couple of follow-up lessons with uh, creasing and a couple of other options as well. Great. So now that we have that area creased, let's bring back our inner layer. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to click and drag the entire way around both of these using shift, click, and this way, this way. And right here. Oh, and we forgot the top one here. And then these two. Great, and then we can go up to create sets, quick select set, and call this inner volume selection. And we can go to our crease tool and just crease it all the way to the right. That way when we hit three, 
we have a nice tight edge there. Cool. And so there you have it. I mean, right now we, we're going to just go over blend shape pretty quickly to show just uh, how to make, wrap a different pattern onto this geometry. And before we do that, we're going to talk a bit about uh, actually smoothing this out because as I mentioned before, right now this is just a display. So I'm going to grab both of these. I'm just going to grab the uh, group, but we're going to need to bring this inner, the Polysurface 9, when we combined it, uh, it was formed its own its own new geometry, so we're going to bring this back in, and I'm going to middle mouse button drag it to that ma main mass group. And I'm just going to duplicate it over. And just did control D. And so, to actually smooth this out, so that it's not just a display, we can go up to, I'm just going to select the top, and we can go up to Mesh, Smooth, and open the dialog box. And so here I'm, I'm going to make sure by default, if you do edit reset settings, all these are going to be checked here. And I'm going to uncheck all the preserves because I don't want any hard edges. I don't want any, um, any of the tessellation, anything. I mean, it, the, the crease is going to hold its position. But as we start to smooth it, you can see that everything else is moving the way it's supposed to. It's smoothing itself out. And do the same thing for the underside here. And always just keep the division levels to one because it is exponential. And this way you can just control it whichever way you'd like. So there we go. And this is three and three. And if, this, if it's still a little too jagged, you can do another level if you'd like. I mean, it's start, it'll start getting pretty heavy, but we can start to actually see what it looks like when it's fully smooth. And then the last thing you'd want to do with this is select, the creases are still here. We want to delete the history right away. And we want to uncrease, remove basically the creases from both of these. So I'm going to select and do remove all creases. And for this guy, I'm going to go to display and just turn off the vertices. And there you have it. Here is our, let me put a ground plane in just for fun. And here is our geometry from our sketch. We can see we've built out the inner liner. And you know, everything's flowing pretty nicely. I'm gonna go grab my hypershade again. I'm going to assign a different uh, material to this. I'm going to grab that blend and just put it over top. And make it a bit. A bit more. And so we can see it a little bit better this way with the wireframe. And if we hide that, we can see our inner geometry. And you know, of course, one of the, the things you always have to keep in mind, you always want to keep a low poly version and a high, if you're gonna ever go to high poly, you always want to keep a low poly version for sure. And so I would rename this main mass HP, HP not H, HP and the other one main mass LP just because you never know when you're going to need to go back and from this point there is no going back you're with this now and if we wanted to see where uh, these low poly spheres that we use as the original volumes we would of course have to and I remember we took this one out and this one and then the involution here is cutting into that one but you could see where our volumes were originally 
and yeah so you know it looks pretty nice uh, it's clean it you know we started with a really low resolution geometry added some a bit of complex geometry as far as uh, understanding how to make this transition happen between uh, a primitive and and the desire of what you wanted your geometry to look like so you know it looks pretty good uh, and we're gonna now in the next and final lesson we're just gonna use a blend shape to remake a pattern here and use it to wrap it back up and that will be it